Welcome on down to another arcade tutorial fell dazzlers and new players are like what is going on everybody Razzle just are here taking you on the trip through time as we do a ROMs tutorial now we've got one on the channel already yes that's for a way older version of me this is more for the recent builds as I'd like to call them so how do you get them their ROMs put into your meme game so they pop up in your available list if you uh, extract your meme you should have a folder called ROMs all you gotta do is plop your ROMs in your ROM folder and da ding there you go pretty straightforward in that regard and one of the only straightforward parts of <laughs> adding ROMs to your meme because <laughs> it kind of gets a bit complicated uh, once you get past that and if you start getting errors it can get super complicated stupid fast unless you kind of have an idea of how to narrow things down so uh, that's how you install ROMs now there may be BIOS too that you need for example uh, Neo Geo. If you want to play yes, some Metal Slug, you're going to need the Neo Geo zip. And then there are also uh, file types called controllers, which I believe emulate like hardware that was attached to the board or something like that. My, my memory is a little bit hazy on that. My memory does not serve me correctly in that case. But they are files that you're going to need for some games. And like for example, you've got the Namcos. That's what all these are. Are controllers for older Namco games like a Pac-Man, Galaga, and so on and so forth. Now, what about chid files, right? What are chids anyways? Well, simply put, chids are compressed hunks of data. They represent hard drives, CDs, whatever. It depends on your game. So, uh, I've seen people uh, who end up with a chid file, like from a dump that uh, will have like game name dash chd. If you have that, you need to rename it to match the zip file for the game that you are trying to play. Editor Razzle here, I forgot to mention, you need to extract the zip file. So you're not just gonna rename it, you need to extract the zip file, so the zip file that you're gonna extract, and it's that extracted folder that you're going to rename. Don't leave chids in their zip folders. This is one of the only files you're gonna actually extract when it comes to me. Well, you got Area 51 up here, right? And inside we've got Area51.chd. So, like when I obtained my Area 51 uh, CHD, what I had to do was um, extract it, name it, make sure it's all good. So, what do I mean by that? So, we go here, we got our Area 51 version R3000. And the short name is Area 51. The short name is going to be the zip folder it's going to look for. It doesn't say .zip, but that's what it's going to look for. So, if, you, if I was to go and change uh, Area 51 down here, find it to like say area51b.zip, MAME would have a hissy fit and be like, I can't find this. And I get the big red screen that says I don't have all the files I need. So to avoid getting the big red screen in regards to your chid, what you're gonna do is just make sure your folder is named after the short name here. So we're just gonna name this area51. And then we've got our cozy little area51.chd in here. We're not gonna change the name of this because MAME's gonna look for this. And be wary, there are some CHDs that aren't gonna match one-to-one -one with um, the folder name. A good example of this is, I believe, Thrill Drive 2. If we come in here, right, we've got Thrill uh, with one L, D2. If we come in here, we end up with this file that's a41b02.chd. If I were to change this to Thrill, D dot, uh, thrill D2.chid, Man would have a hissy fit and be like, I can't find this chid file, you can't run this game. So make sure you do that. Uh, it does seem complicated, but it's not really so much at first, once you know what information you need. Again, match the folder housing your chid to the short name, that is, the zip file that's going to have your ROM, and then the CHD itself is going to sit nice and cozy in that folder. Now you may be asking, Razzle, how do I figure out how all this stuff has, uh, where, where, what I need for all this stuff without getting a bunch of red screens? I got you covered, fam. So uh, what you're going to do is go to a site called Arcade Database. Now sometimes this site is temperamental. It'll run sometimes, it'll take a while, but it's good to keep in your back pocket. So what you can do is you can type in games for MAME and get information on them. So like, for example, let's go to that Area 51, right? We go Area 51 and make sure you type in um, the name exactly, right? You see, I type in Area 51. We've got Area 51 slash Maximum Force Duo. We've got another version of Area 51. We've got Area 51 Site 4. So you want to type that in exactly. So R3000, that's going to narrow it down. And we can, if 
find a version here. We get this cute little loading screen, and booting, we've got this thing with a bunch of cool information on the game, actually, like the video display type, audio channels, the rankings, and uh, information, manufacturer, genre, all kinds of really cool things. What we're going to do is come on down to files, and we're going to click this little dude here. And this shows all the required files you need for MAME, including being able to go back in time and look at older ROM sets. A ROM set being a well, full complete set of ROMs compatible with the version of MAME you're running. So for me, I'm out of whack and out of date with the ROM <laughs> with the version 0.268, which means I would need a ROM set compatible with version 0.268. Fortunately, the Area 51 uh, equipment that I have, or files that I have, are compatible because we can see that this current uh, display for required files is 0.258 through 0.272, the latest version of MAME. And you get some uh, nice notes down here as well. And if you go to the ROM set here and click that, it'll show you all the files inside the ROM that you should have. So if you want to double check and make sure that the ROM you have matches your ROM set, Okay, database has you covered. For example, I've got my uh, Area 51 ROM opened up here, and you can see all the little cute files in here. And then if we do a cross-reference, we can see that they do in fact line it up. Meaning that if I use any MAME from 0.258 through 0.272 with this file, with all those little guys in there, it works fine. Now you may be wondering why there's there might be different files Arcade Emulation is always marching forward, and there's always sometimes updates, changes, things like that to uh, games that have already been dumped, uh, and that can result in different file names that need to be obtained in order to get it running on MAME. Like, if we were to go back here, you can see while the files look similar, they are different from what's in here. So if I was to somehow obtain a version of Area51.zip that worked with the 0.91 ROM set, MAME's gonna have a hissy fit and be like, hey, what gifts? I can't find it. But chits aren't the only thing you can find. I mentioned things like controllers earlier, so to put up Dig Dug instead because it was taking a long to find Galaga. Uh, again, you have to make sure you type that thing exactly as it pops up, otherwise you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna run into a bunch of things. So we got Dig Dug Revision Two, and if we scroll on down here, you can see that you need not just Dig Dug .zip, but Namco 51.zip and Namco 53.zip. And you even have a little link here that can give you some information on that Namco 53, including the ROM set files that you need as well to make sure your controllers are up to date. You can do this for anything as well. Use it for any game that you want to just make sure you've got all the pieces before you plug it in because emulation in MAME is weird and now I think that about does it as far as the basics go. We've now gone over how to verify files in a ROM, how to install your ROMs, how to get your chits set up. But let's say you did your homework, you did the math, you've got the files for, let's say, you fancy yourself Area 51 Atari Games license, and you're like, all right, I'm about to load this game up, and this happens, and you're like, but Razzle, you're dazzling me here. I went and I did everything you said, and it's doing this to me. Mm, did you get the parent ROM. So MAME was created back in the day where like hard disk space was a luxury <laughs> and um, basically long story short you can end up with different versions under different zip folders. So what you need to make sure you get is what's called the parent ROM. Notice how MAME down here says system is parent. You can also easily visually check a parent from a clone ROM. I sometimes call them child ROMs but a uh, parent from a clone ROM based on the color of the text, the arena here, this, or Area 51 Site 4 right here, right, you can see this is a little bit more brighter, and if you come down here, this is a little bit more grayed out, meaning that this is the child ROM, the uh, clone ROM. And it may well even tell you, system is clone of blah 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 blah. So you know what parent ROM you need, and you only need the parent ROM, so if like, Say, for example, you like the Time Warner license October 17, 1996 version of Area 51. Well, as long as you've got the Area 51 R3000 set up and ready to go, bada bing bada boom, you can run that child ROM. Please note that child ROMs, uh, clone ROMs, typically will require their own CHD. So, 
So we've got Era 51, a Time Warner license. I don't remember if it's the same exact version. So if we come down here and we go to Files. Ah, we've been bamboozled. You need the Area 51 T.chd. So keep that in mind. The, if you're dealing with a game that has CHD files, typically the uh, clone ROMs are going to need a um, CHD that matches that. And don't take the CHD from the parent ROM and rename it because I haven't tried that, but I can imagine it's not going to work and <laughs> you're going to have a bad time. Don't, don't do it. I'll, let me do that for you and, and post a YouTube short or something of it. <laughs> as far as uh, BIOS go, typically you just need that one BIOS. So if there's like different versions of, say, Marvel vs. Capcom, and you've got the parent version, and then you've got the uh, cute little, you know, child ROMs, clone ROMs, whatever ROMs, and then uh, that one BIOS folder it needs, which I think it's Q Sound. It's like Q Sound.zip or something like that. You're good to go. You don't need separate BIOS for each separate uh, uh, clone ROM that you're running. Now come on back over to MAME. You'll notice this little box down here will change colors. Like, for example, we go to Available, and let's say we type in Lethal Enforcers. So you'll see this down here changes to a kind of orangish yellow look. And you can see that overall it's working, but the graphics aren't perfect and the sound isn't perfect. This isn't anything that you can really fix, that just means that the emulation isn't quite 100% there yet. Remember, it's an emulation is always marching forward. So there could come a time where Lethal Enforcers get that emulation down pat, and I'll have to get that updated. Updating ROMs is... that's something else. The time on this is already going on, going on long enough. That's something I'm still looking into myself as well. I usually just set it and forget it, and then go, oh... Oops, when something happens. But you may also notice something like this as well. Say you want to play a game that's not working, like uh, since we're on an Area 51 kick, Area 51 Site 4, right? This thing has been working since whenever, and you can see that it's not working in big red letters. Graphics are okay, sounds okay, but overall, it's not working, meaning that, yeah, maybe you can boot the game up and look at it, but it's not going to work to some extent. I kind of like a game where, like, I could boot it up, I could put quarters in, but the gun controls just didn't work. Didn't matter what I did. And if you have a game that says it's not working, like this, if this box down here is red, not your, uh, not your, hey, you don't have this, but the, you know, hey not working. And I'll show you what that looks like if you actually try to boot a game that's not fully uh, working yet. So I've got this bootleg of Ninja Baseball Batman called Ninja Baseball Batman 2 that I have for some strange reason. We're gonna run this. And we get this big red screen. Again, if you see this, heed its warning, the system doesn't work. There's nothing you can do to fix this problem except wait for the developers to improve the emulation. But it is nice enough to tell you the working clones that work. Again, make sure you check, make sure you have the parent ROM if you are going to, you know, do that so you can run the game properly. And the breadth of which these work varies. I don't think this actually... Oh, here we go. So we're actually getting something booting here. But the game may or may not work. Like, see, you can, you can see that it's just all weird. Like, you can, you, can, you can technically run it. Technically, yes, you can, but you can't really play it. <laughs> Sometimes it does say that, even though the game can run. Uh, I know in this version of MAME, for whatever reason, Thrill Drive was put into the not working folder, even though you can actually run it perfectly fine, at least in version 0 0.268. But that's a very very rare exception to the rule. Typically, it's not going to work, and there's really nothing you can do about it. So, you may have heard of something. Before we go, I want to show you one more trick. You may have heard of something called a merge set. What a flapjackety Jim Jacks does that mean? Well, a merge set means that you've taken the files from a child ROM, and you've put them into your parent ROM to make one super ROM. So, you might notice I've had the Splatter J open here. It's because I was dorking around with this earlier. 
and um, this is a one exception where you're actually going to extract your ROMs. Typically you do not extract your ROMs at all whatsoever. You just put them in there as they are, aside from of course needing to make sure they're named properly, make sure you do the whole thing with the folders and whatnot with the chids. Other than that, <laughs> right, Spider House, you just put it in there. There's no bios, there's no chids, there's no random controller thing you got to download. You just put it in, if it matches with your ROM set, you're good to go. So anyways. Um, if you want to merge your ROM sets, typically you're going to need to take the files that are inside your child ROM and put them inside the parent ROM. So you really can't do that when it's not extracted, so you have to extract it and put it in there. And I've got SplatterJ down here in a zip folder, uh, just to make sure that MAME isn't picking up on it. And then we have Splatter here, and you can see it's a little bit bigger than normal because it's got the child ROM stuff in here. And we've got our parent ROM here. Now what happens if we try to run the clone ROM? Well, what do you know? It boots. It boots. So you can use this trick to basically merge your ROMs together. Because what happens is, um, what MAME does is for the child ROMs, the clone ROMs, whatever, it checks this first to make sure it has a file. Because the parent ROM is going to have all the main files you need to run. The uh, child ROM is going to have just the bare minimum, the extra files basically needed to, to run the different version of the ROM, so to speak. And so making a merge set means that you have everything, you know, all together in one. So if you've ever obtained your ROM from some random place somewhere, and you suddenly found that you have like five different versions of Darkstalkers, despite the fact you just, you just uh, obtained Darkstalkers.zip, uh, that's probably why you have obtained a merged ROM without realizing it. Uh, that's pretty much it. I think I covered most of the bases there. Uh, if there is something, I'm pretty sure you guys want me to hear about it. And if you're running into any other problems as well, make sure you sound off in the description. I mean, in the comments down below. Uh, we do want to hear about any problems you have. And again, I want to build a community. We can all come together and figure this stuff out. Because sometimes there's just that one situation that you're not sure of, even though you've done everything right. The more people we have looking into things, the better. And hopefully quicker we can get to solving whatever issue you have have with that so thank you very much guys and until next time i want to let you know that you are beautiful stars take care everybody